announcement. Hello, everybody. Of course, I waited to the last minute again, and I didn't get any practice time in, and I didn't get, well, I wanted to get some practice time in, so I think I'm going to sit here and practice a little with you all while I clean up my mess. Hope everyone's been having a great week. My mouse. Oh, I think my, no, I thought for once, at one, uh, for a second I thought I had the this blue shirt on that would match my embroidery floss, but it doesn't. There it is. Now I can see myself and everyone else. See, Teresa ran off to the doctors. Hello, Agnes, Cajun Crafter, Jackie. Hello, Robin from Our Island Crafts. closer. Casuville and Sylvia. So what I'm going to do since it's about 11 minutes to 3 and it's too early for us to really get started, I'm going to refresh the page because I can't see. Hi Marie. See you on the replay. Refresh, refresh, refresh. There we are. It said I was the only one in the room, so I always have to refresh it to see who's here. I hope I chose the right internet. You can stay a whole five minutes. Woo we appreciate any amount of time you can stay and hang out with us. Hi, Denise. All right, now I've got the whirly wheel of death there. Hope don't have it there. I don't know what internet I'm using. I hope I got it on the right one. That's so funny. Thanks, Gwenny. I can't see myself at all. I'm not even sitting at the table. Hi, Charlotte from Oklahoma. I don't need to see myself. It just kind of helps to know that you guys can see what I'm doing. She made noises with the bracelet. I need to put the band on. I mean, you'd think it'd be like the first time I've ever gone live, right? Hi, Cindy. Unless I said hi to you already, then I apologize. Double hi. Hi, Lucy. Gosh, darn did it. Probably doesn't help that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve tabs open, thirteen tabs open. I'll close some of those. There I am. I can see myself. Woohoo! Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a practice that I want to play with a little bit before we get started, just because I haven't done a back stitch in a little bit. I brought some fabric postcards, so any of my moderators that happen to be here. We're going to do the same thing again this live. You guys want to choose anyone from the chat at any time during the live stream, send me their name, and I will let them know that they won a fabric postcard. Or you can just say it right now, anytime during the live, so that they know to mail me their mailing address. However you want to do it, if you want it to be a surprise or not. You guys had fun last time, so you can each pick a winner again this time. And I didn't want these out. I got a haircut. You can't see very well, but uh, yeah, I got a lot of them cut. She got it really short, but she didn't actually like style it. So we'll see what it looks like when it grows out. But for now, it's just nice and short. I can't complain. She did exactly what I asked. Cut it short. Courtney, Rose, Melanie, hello everyone. I like to use a spring hoop. Let's see if I can get just... I'm not even gonna bother. I made a practice piece for myself that I thought I would just turn into a pouch later. Thanks, Gwen. Yeah, I made it out Monday. I went to my doctor's appointment. I got a haircut. I went to Lowe's. I went to Michael's. I just made the whole rounds. Hello, Ellie from Hawaii. Yeah, short is nice in the summer, definitely. Thanks, Jenny. 
definitely much shorter. You guys will see it in next week's Whip It Wednesday. By then, it'll have a week. My hair usually takes about two weeks to settle down. The first couple days, it's in shock, and it's very, very upset with me because, you know, I went from long, and then I tortured it and made it shorter. Hello, Jenny. But I have all of my fun stuff. I'm surrounded by goodness. So has everyone here done any type of hand embroidery or is this new? Jody made it, sipping coffee. What is it, it's three, you're sipping coffee at noon? Well, I mean, I drink tea throughout the day, so why not? I mean, you drink, <coughs> excuse me, you can drink coffee all day long. I'm gonna get a drink and see if I can spill it while we work. Very thirsty today. Let's see if I try not to be too clumsy. Aerosmith fan. Steven Tyler hearted a comment. Ooh, you left a comment on an Aerosmith video and he hearted it? All day, every day. Sue's got coffee. Sue, did you hear we're doing the fabric postcard thing again? So you can pick one and let us know in the chat or you can let me know privately later. I mean, either way is fine, but if you let me know, if you let them know now while they're in the chat during the live stream, then they'll know to send me their mailing address. Otherwise, I can just search them anyways and find a previous comment. Sandra started embroidery and Lucy, oh, thank you, Lucy. I, I know I, I actually went and I picked up some new thread at Michael's. Not that I need it, but I just wanted it because the colors are so pretty. Well, I hope you're doing well, Jenny, that whatever reason you're in the hospital, that you're going to be improving and getting out soon and coming home. Being in the hospital, it's, it's, it's a necessary evil. You have to be there to heal yourself, but it's never really fun. It's always feel good when, it always feels good when you get home. You did, Denise, are you gonna embroider with us now? Oh, Jody, we're doing simple. We're just doing backstitch and French knots. That's it. Nothing. Jackie, were you here when we said we're doing the fabric postcards again this time? So you can either email me or let, let us know right in the chat. I don't have anything to write with, though. I'll have to find something. Mm. Jenny, are you the one I chat with on Instagram all the time? Another asthma attack? That's not fun. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mix all the threads. Yes, definitely. Mix the colors, mix the threads. I just happen to have an abundance of the DMC. Now, I am mixing. I bought some 25s. I don't, I guess it's just... Okay, I really don't need to know all the fancy things about it. I watch the videos and they tell me what everything means. It's in one ear and out the other. My thing is, ooh, pretty colors. You know, and you can pick and choose too. You don't have to do the entire quilt. We're gonna talk about that. But you don't, I'm not doing a quilt. I'm doing individual months and then I'm just gonna hang them up individually. You don't have to make. Oh yeah. Now this is really easy though, because this is not, this is not, um, it's not cross stitch and it's not the one where they paint the canvas, the canvases that are really expensive and that you embroider across that way. It's not that either. We're just going to color, color, we're going to stitch right along on the line. So it's really, that's, that's what I thought. It took me a second, but yep. When you said asthma, then I knew, oh, okay. So you didn't get better from your last asthma attack. But I'm all about the pretty colors. I mean, there's hand dyed thread. I don't even want to get into that. And then you have all one of these. These are thread works, hand over dyed floss. Oh, that's so pretty. These were sent to me. Rainbow glow from, from somebody. See, these are 11.25 or they were 11.25 a scheme or unless it was this whole package. So hand dyed everything is going to be very expensive. So I'm really pleased and honored to be able to play with this and not make any more crinkly noises. But I'm just happy with the DMC. 
yeah, I just, that's why I said jacket. I'm just going to do mini wall hangings because I didn't turn the other ones into a quilt. I wanted to do them in mini wall hangings, but I could only think of groups of three. I didn't have it in my head that I could do just one month. Tapestry, that's it. Yes, exactly, Lucy. I like to be able to just sketch something out or find something I like or even take these patterns and, and go further on it and just... I really like those projects. Have you seen them on Instagram? I look at them all the time. I follow all kinds of people where they'll take a hoop, they'll put a piece of fabric in it, and it's like an aerial view, aerial view if you're on an airplane, and you can see like a river with a little guy canoeing in it. You see all the grass and the trees and the flowers and everything. It's just gorgeous, and they build it up so it's a 3D thing. Anybody want to see my embroidery floss collection before we get started? Jody, you can do anything you want. They do these in applique. You can do them in applique. I've done them before where you can color the little birdie in. Jackie, I have some needle points. I just, I, I shouldn't say recently purchased it. I purchased the 2020 Christmas stuff that went on sale at Hirschner's. I purchased it in like January, February of 2021. I just haven't pulled it out yet. So needlepoint is fun and I, I just, I love cross stitch, but I, I found that I can only do the little ornaments. That's, that's all I need. The whole big thing and all of the big ones and the really detailed thing is just not for me. Now what the Frosted Pumpkin does and how they have the monthly ones and you do the little bits and then when you're done you have that design, I can do that. Full coverage, no. The big like Disney pieces, no. But I just love. Oh, you guys wanna see before we get going? I'll show you. Now I had some help with this and it's not the entire collection because I have bits and pieces everywhere. But I did purchase these to store just the floss in. So this is no big deal. I just happened to bring it out because I was looking at the floss. And you can get these at Michael's and watch when they go on sale because they're like very expensive, $40, $50, $60 or whatever they are. But you can get them for $12 or $15. So you can separate them by color because I'm no longer putting mine on the plastic bobbins. I'm leaving mine in full skeins. And we'll talk about that as we get going. So I have a whole bunch of these. And then some extra colors. These are the ones I just bought. In addition to what's sitting on the table. Weren't these colors beautiful? It wasn't going to work for my rainbow, but I just love them. And I really want to do an embroidery project that's under the sea. I want to do the ocean with the coral reefs and all of that. Yeah, $14.99 a case because they're meant for photos. So if you can find them at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, wherever you can get them. Hi, Hazel. We haven't quite started. Oh, 3 o'clock. You are perfectly on time. We are just talking about thread right now or floss, however you want to look at it. Everyone has a different name for it. But then over here... Somebody shared part of their mother's collection with me. Just part of it. Let me see, this is mine and this is mine. So this was part of her mom's collection. And she kept it, everything was, um, I can't remember if it was organized or a mess. I know I went through and reorganized everything for me. Yes, under the sea. Now, the Frosted Pumpkin is doing an under the sea thing that I, I'll probably pick up later on this year. I won't stitch along with them, but... Now she liked a lot of the darker colors and then you could tell like this is a and then when I show you, yeah, this is where I always stored them before, but now when I show you, these are my two boxes plus whatever I have floating around loosely. So this is, you can see through the bottom of this one. So here's this one and I just love, you know me, I love the brighter colors and I don't care, I'm not picky. I have those packs. I started out buying those packs at Michael's to make friendship bracelets, but there's some of my brights. And I, I love the variegated and stuff like that. I have a shoe, one of those plastic shoe boxes 
with a whole bunch of the Michaels generic kind. And for what I do, the generic works perfectly fine because I'm doing free form. I'm nobody's telling me just because this has a rainbow doesn't mean I have to make a rainbow. I can make these in all shades of purple if I like because the rainbow doesn't belong to anyone. The rainbow can be whatever I want it to be. So these are the ones that are all bobbinated. I don't know if that's a real word, but that's what I call it. Yes, Hazel, it can be very difficult. That's why I just say I'm in Florida and it's 3 p.m. Eastern. And if you just ask Siri or ask Google, someone will tell you what time it is based on where you are. I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna purchase the Under the Sea because I love the Frosted Pumpkin cross stitch. I'm very particular. I have one the uh, several years ago of the fairy tales and that I got through I think four or five months of that. Oh yeah I have there's pearl cottons not in these. I keep those somewhere else. Oh I have some over here. This is pretty organized for me. So here are the pearl cotton that I started putting onto the bobbins and I didn't like that but even these, these were some of my under the sea colors and whenever they were on sale at Michael's and I loved the colors I would just pick them up. You don't need to make anything with it if you know eventually you're going to make something because there will come a day when you're ready to make it and you don't have the money or the supplies so they're right there. Now these were sent to me, this is how pearl cotton will usually come, DMC. But the little technique, the little trick is, is to get these gumball things. And if you store it in there, it keeps it nice and clean. You can buy pearl cotton thread on a spool. And is it Aurifil that has the, the heavy duty sewing machine? You don't use it for the sewing machine, you use it for embroidery, but it comes on a thing like this. Now I've touched, I've touched a lot of dusty things. So excuse me one second, I have to go wash my hands. I can see they're dusty. A lot of things I don't worry about with my hands being, you know, super duper clean, but they were looking a little gray and I don't want to transfer anything that's on my hands. I use a hand lotion that is non-greasy, but I try to make sure I put it on a half hour before I sit down to stitch. Here are, these are just beautiful. Look at those colors. Aren't they just gorgeous? This is definitely needs to be given considerable thought before I just go ahead and use it for whatever. I have a I have a box of fun that I received when I got the snowman and the Santa Claus embroideries that it just has a variety of things in here. Okay, but this isn't what we're doing today. Today, today we're tripping over the chair. Today, we are going to work on the birdie stitches and we're gonna have to have a lot of chats and discussions. So if anyone has any questions, today is a good day to ask them. The hand dyed stuff is just too beautiful, it's just too beautiful. It's like that fabric you don't wanna use. I was telling the peeps that were here before three o'clock that I'd made a, I wanted to practice putting my interfacing on, which I don't really need practice on. I wanted to practice stitching it, uh, tracing it out. And I was gonna practice my back stitch before we got started, but I'll just go ahead and practice on what we're doing. Hello, everybody. Gwen, he's 35. Quinny, you are not in your 70s, right? No way. Okay, I got my shirt. You ever just, I feel fidgety. Like, if your shirt's just not sitting just right, it's not comfortable. Let's talk fabric. 
Since we are turning this, I'm turning mine into individual mini quilts. You can turn yours into, yep, that's the right way. This is gonna be my top. You can turn these into anything you want. If we are following the pattern precisely, and now listen, you do not have to follow the pattern precisely. You can make bigger squares, smaller squares. You don't have to do these. You can put no borders. You can put straight, solid pieces of fabric on it. You don't have to do the squares. The project is yours. Make one square, see how you feel. If you like it the way you made it, then go ahead and make the next 11 that way. If you don't like it, we'll turn this into a little pillow and put it in your Etsy shop or give it to the grandkids or even, I, I wouldn't let the cats have it, but you can let the dog lay on it my cats would pull at the thread. Feeling 35 definitely counts. I am using a basic, I bought Kona cotton from Joann's. This, I got confused because there was two listings for Quicksilver. So I don't know if there was two of the same listings, but I bought Quicksilver because I decided, where's my old one? Boy, I'm a jackrabbit. Normally I love, in the past I love to stitch on white, but now I prefer gray. Let's look at the difference between these two. I mean, obviously I'm still in the same type of colors. I chose a few different ones. You're going to put 20, two and a half inch squares around your border, at least following the pattern. So I mixed up a whole bunch of the rainbow colors because the pattern is a rainbow for March. But this is what it looks like if you put it on white. Kona cotton, yes ma'am. Now, because we're making a quilt, we basically use cotton, but you can embroider on anything. If you can get a needle and thread through it, you can embroider on it. You can embroider on denim, hand embroidery on denim jeans and denim bags is really in right now. You can, you can still, even though this is not cross-stitching, you can embroider on any of the fabric you have for cross-stitching, whether it's the Ada or, I don't know, the linen and all the different ones. The, you can do it on silk. You can do it, again, if you can put a needle through it, you can do it. So anything, the Kona at Joann's is a lesser quality. Everything at Joann's is a lesser quality. But I had a Joann's gift card, so I was going to Joann's. So you can do anything you want. So if you have linen at home and you prefer linen, this piece here can be linen. And you can put anything, you can put regular quilting cotton around it. If you're just making a wall hanging, you can do, I, I was going to do my, my beloved batiks, but I didn't, the combos that would work through the entire year wasn't gonna work for me. A grunge fabric would work. You can use black right here. Nobody says you can't have a black fabric and put some bright colors. You can do this entire thing in one fat, one thread color. So maybe you want to have a red quilt with the white embroidered floss. Or you can do the white fabric and do the red work on top and have red. There's red work and blue work and black work. And that just means you're only using the one color of floss, red, black, or blue in each project. Okay, the patterns, I believe I have them linked down below today. Let me double check. Yep, on this video, they're linked down below. They're also linked in this morning's video. This is a project that I did in 2015 with coriander quilts. Did I say it right? Double check. Coriander Quilts. She designed this for us and it was a way to get quilters to start doing some hand embroidery. Oh, I mixed how many stitches. Oh, this one I have, I have six threads here, but I can see on the rest I didn't use six threads of floss. We're going to talk about that in a second too. So depending on what you want your finished project to be, you can use any type of fabric you want here. Black fabric with the neon or the glow in the dark threads is fun. I like to do that. Yep, a child's quilt, or as I keep saying, I'm just gonna do the one, and I will, I, I'm not gonna put a border, I don't feel like I need to put a border around it. 
I will go ahead and do my embroidery and then when it's all done, I'm still going to quilt it. I won't quilt, when there's embroidery for me, I like to be really careful. It's too easy to get your foot hooked on it or your sewing machine. If you're doing some free motion, you can always free motion around it. But for me, I'm just going to stitch right around here. And then we'll see what I do on the borders if I do anything at all. As a one-off mini quilt, it doesn't need a ton of quilting. Now I want to talk one more about the fabric before we get to the threads. You can't see it on the back of mine, but I have a interfacing on mine. I like to use the P44F. It's a lightweight interfacing. This one I have scraps. So you can see the lines where I've just added the scraps on because this is going to get turned into some type of a pouch or something, tote bag, zipper pouch. So it can be done you know, I just overlapped it a little bit. On these, I have one full piece. So based on the directions for this project, what I did is I followed it and I put my interfacing on the back. Some people like to use an SF-101. It's a little bit thicker. I like the P44F because, you know, it's there's nothing to it. It's really soft. And what it does is when you're doing this, not only does it make it a little bit firmer, so it's easier for you to stitch through it, but it also hides your threads on the back. So if you're going to take your thread, let's say we're going to do our, our rainbow all in one color. So when we go and we start here and we get down here, if we want, we could just tuck down to the next one. And if you have some type of an interfacing on the back, you don't normally see the shadowing of the thread. You can also put in a piece of muslin, something that's going to go with your fabric. If you have white fabric, I wouldn't use something that's gray or brown or tan on the back. You can use a any type of a thin Joann's type cotton fabric, like the calicos and stuff like that. Some of them are really thin. You may have bought a, a really like, I keep thinking a pale yellow because I bought a pale yellow many, many yards of it and it was too thin. So you can go ahead and do that. And then I went ahead and I put my squares together and stitched it on. And the reason I like to do that is instead of having like the interfacing on the entire block, you don't need it on these pieces, but mine is an iron on, but it's also now in the seams. So the stitching is gonna hold it in place. So when I wash it, this stitching is going to hold it down and the stitching around here so if anything happens and I didn't press it really well and it starts to come up or something that I don't have to worry about it. Now we'll talk threads and then we'll talk about how to get the pattern. I might have put a link, let me double check. I think in this morning's video, I put a link. I have an embroidery playlist here on YouTube where I talked about tracing out the pattern. I talked about how to get it in the hoop and different things like that. So if you want to check that out later on, you can go ahead and see that. Thank you. I really like, you know me, I like all the different colors. So when you do this, the designer chose to use six strands. Now, I, the reason, one of the reasons I'm redoing mine is, see if I can, dee, 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 dee. when I did mine, come on, where are you at? Go down, there you go. I have a whole bunch, I didn't put really tight stitches. I have them, they're probably a quarter to, probably at least a quarter inch or more, almost a half an inch long. I can see all of the threads on here are all coming unseparated from the other ones. So if you want a really bold, thick look, you can use six strands of the embroidery floss, or you can get pearl cotton and use a thicker. Hi, Roy. Oh, yeah, but a nap sounds so good, doesn't it? There's pearl cotton comes, even the embroidery floss, some of them come in different sizes a little bit, but I know pearl cotton comes in fives and eights and threes and stuff. So you can always get a thicker floss or thread to use if you want to have that nice bold look but you don't want to have all these stitches. I have a hard time using six threads and getting everything nice and tight together 
Plus I thought it wouldn't matter. I would get done faster if I used longer stitches, but then now I know better that it looks nicer when you have smaller bits. Ooh, teal. Teal red work would be beautiful. Red work's fine. I did red work. I'm beyond red work. That, that's not my thing anymore. Like to do each month, like a pumpkin month, a Halloween can be all orange and Thanksgiving can be all browns or something like that. I like that idea. I was going to practice to see if I wanted to do three or four, but I think I'm going to stick with three. Yeah, six threads is just too much. Most of the people, the, the newer ones that were following the designer because she was like, okay, you're like, well, gee, Robin, you're showing us how to do it. You must know what you're talking about. We're going to do whatever you do. No, that's not how it works. I mean, it's nice and I would appreciate that and all, and that's really sweet of you, but this is your project. I highly suggest, even if you don't do a separate block, just to get a little small piece of scraps. Work on it however you're gonna do. If you're gonna put interfacing or a piece of fabric back there, try four threads. You know, give it a little bit of test, do some running stitches, some back stitches, since that's what we're gonna do. See what it looks like. If you like it, then you do it. If you don't, well, let's try three. You think you might want six? You might want this big bold look? Get out of there. Cats are playing where the embroidered floss was. If you think you want to do six strands, then go ahead and try it. If you want to only have a really subtle look, then you can go down to one or two strands. I like, I like three, so I'm going to try three with mine. And since mine are one-off blocks, I have no problem doing three on this one and doing four on the next one. It doesn't bother me. That's what, Sylvia, if that works for you, then that is perfect. Then that's what you go ahead and do. I like... I did three when I was doing uh, when, you know, the Halloween. If you guys have been here for a while, you know I'm doing a Halloween one on purple batiks that I tried starting over a couple times, and I'm going to have to start it over one more time. I tried a variety. I tried the pearl cotton in the two different sizes. I tried doing two strands. I tried doing four strands. So I know I like three strands. So three is for me. You just have to make sure. You like what you're doing. You like the look. That's why you do the practice one first. Do a few stitches. But you also have to make sure with your needle. Now, I don't know what needles these are. They just happen to be in with the rest of my embroidery stuff. But I know I like a really sharp needle. And when you put your strands of floss, now if you do six strands or if you're using a thicker pearl cotton, you're going to need a larger eye to your needle than if someone like Sue and who else? Sylvia likes two strands. So if you're only putting two strands in, you want a smaller eye of your needle. The eye of your needle creates the hole for your floss to go through. You don't, if you have a small needle, like let's say you're crazy and you do something, you have like a quilting needle, but you have three strands of embroidery floss, you're gonna get the needle to go through no problem. But then it's gonna be stuck and you're gonna be going like this and trying to pull through. There are different size needles. I buy, I like to buy that multi-pack with all the different needles on it. I have some needles over there, but they're, I think they're wool. Oh, here's some embroidery ones. So these are size four, and I think it has a lot to do with the size of the eye of the needle. Like when you're quilting, you know you have the shorter ones, and then there's like tens and in-betweens and stuff like that. I think if you're a cross stitcher and you know what size needle you like for cross stitching, you can use the same one for embroidery. These came from a multi-pack. I lie. I lie a lot to you guys. These came from a pack of embroidery needles that I bought at Joann's that said sharp. First I bought the dull ones. Boy, I got, you guys are just looking at my chin and my mouth moving. I don't know about you, but that's distracting me. There we go. That was a weird angle. You can get a needle threader. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry my face is gone, but it's either all of my face or none of my face. When we start doing, we're going to do a lot, random live streams each month where we're just going to sit down and work on this. I'm going to work on it and you guys can work on whatever you want. But when we do that, I will put the camera like the Whip It Wednesday so that it's facing me. But for today, I wanted you guys to see this. I didn't want you to see my double chins bopping up and down. 
So I would buy the multi-pack, the ones that they usually come in a long black container with a little flap on it, and they come in little short ones all the way up to the big ones, and that way you can try all the different needles. You're, you're still going to be spending under $5, and then you can decide if you want the really nice ones. The John James ones are very popular. I really just find whatever I happen to have in the house and I use. So I have my little needle book. This was with the hoop I use. Now, some people will stitch just in hand where they stitch it like this. I like that really, really super tight. So you can have one of the ones that have, they have the plastic ones and the wood ones. If you haven't used one in a long time or you just bought it at the store, I would wash it down with some soapy water. Like mine, mine are just hanging up on the curtain rod up there and they all have a little bit of a layer of dust here like snow on the window. I like these spring hoops where it has this metal spring that you go ahead and just squeeze that together and you can put your, your hoop down there these come in all different sizes and you just pop this in I show this in the video some people like to do it this way so that your your work is underneath and some people like to hoop it this way so it's totally up to you. I like it this way because I need to see where this is because I get my I get my threads caught on it all the time. Okay, now I need to slide down a little because I there we go. All right. Threads, did we do threads? We did needles. Why is Lynn losing her mind? I really like this hoop. Well, the power went out this morning. I was wondering if we were even going to do anything today. Okay, before I can hoop it, now I need to trace out my pattern. By the way, if you get these used, just be wary that they do they can get a little brittle because this is just plastic, so it could um, snap mine. I was working on it and all of a sudden this plastic piece just broke and everything went flying everywhere. It scared me, it was quite hilarious. With this design, it is so dark. Normally, if I, in the past, I would hold this up to the window and trace it, you know, standing up and making your arm ache, but she made the lines just right. Not too bold that you're wasting a lot of ink, but it's enough that I notice I can put it underneath and I can see through it to trace it if I want. You guys can't see it all in the picture, but if you look down, if you set yours down on the table, I can see through and easily trace mine no problem. But on Amazon, the prices for light boxes are really inexpensive just for a basic one. I paid $20 for mine a couple years ago. It's upside down now, but I don't think that's going to matter. And this one has like three different brightnesses. And you can, you can sketch, you know, put your paper. I turned it off. You can put your paper on it and come on. There we go. So you can easily, let's see if you guys can see through now. I guess, see how easy it is to see through with the light box? If you can put batting behind it, oh, and do embroidery, you can. You can put batting behind it and do it quilt as you go. The only problem with that, thank you for saying that because I wanted to mention it. The only problem I could think of with that is you're gonna, you're definitely gonna have to do the stab and poke method. And I don't know how small you're gonna be able to get your stitches. Depending on your batting. Now, my cotton batting, you can put it in a hoop. You can get one of those wooden scroll frames. You can put all your pieces together if you want and just do some long tacking stitches or put some pins in it to hold it together and do it in your hand. If you have the batting and or backing, you're going to have more stability to it. You guys are getting ahead of me, but good ideas. Yes, hold on, hold on. Hold on, thread wax lady. Miss Mocha's here. She has allergies really bad. It's allergy season and we're sitting in her spot. You can't come over here, sweetie. Stay over there. 
again, give it a try. If it works, great. If it doesn't, then, you know, try something different. Now, I use, because it's something I already have, I have it somewhere. Hold on. Darn it. I use beeswax. I keep it in a little Altoid tin with one of the little threader things. And it depends. Sometimes I, I need it. Like if I'm doing a couple of, if you're going through batting, I would say you, oops, sorry, sweetie. I would say you probably would want some type of a, she left something behind, some type of a thread wax or thread conditioner. There's all different kinds. There's, they don't have that one in that blue square container anymore. Trapunto. Trapunto is nice. Hi, Lucy's daughter. I brought over some writing utensils. So when you trace this, you can trace it any way you want. This one I actually traced. Let's see if you can see. You just stick it right in your face. There you go. You can see it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, see, there you go in your face. I used a Micron 01. This is what I was taught to use in the very beginning. I used the Micron pen, and 01 is a very, very thin line. So your stitching is going to cover it, or I don't know how pencils are now, but mechanical pencils, but a big pencil is the best one for tracing out that I'm aware of. Things could have changed in the last 10 years. But a big pencil has a nice, the lead's a little bit softer. It, it still writes beautifully and traces nicely, but it has a good eraser on it too. So if you need to erase something, the big pencil does it. Now, I don't know if any of the other pencils work as well, the mechanical type lead pencils, but a big, I won't use any other mechanical pencil except the big. I did one with the Micron, and I'm gonna do the next one with the Frixion. Yes, it can come back when it's cold, but if I cover everything up with my floss, it won't matter. If I were to be using a, a only white thread or something like that, I would probably match my pen to my backing fabric. If I'm using only white, I'd probably put it on a dark purple or sometimes dark colored. So there's my Micron. And then there's any of the other kinds. You can have, here's a white quilter's pencil. There's that chalk pencil. If you're gonna use any of these blue type ones, make sure you're going to be able to cover the line completely because sometimes the ones that disappear will come back or the ones that if you don't do it at the right amount of time or if you hit a disappearing one with an iron, it becomes permanent and all that. I don't mess with those. I just keep getting these in packages and stuff, but I don't use those at all. The Micron and the Big Pencil and the Frixion, these are the three that I use. When you're doing this, she's printed this off center. You know, so it's you have all this empty space over here. You can fold your section in half and fold it in half and see where it goes. You can just move things around to where you get it. Now, okay. Can't do this upside down because I keep touching it with my hand. If you're going to do your squares first and not have any type of a border one on it, I recommend cutting out the center square larger so that after you get your design on, if it's a little crooked or anything, you can trim it down the size. And it doesn't have to be too much larger. An eight and a half inch square, if you want to make it nine or nine and a half, that'll work. If you're going to build it like this, you're going to cut that center square at exactly eight and a half inches. Some of the months, if you look at her quilt, some of the months she has her, her birds and stuff come right up to the edge. This month we can move around and if we want him to be a little off to the side on his block, maybe we're going to be a little quirky or if we want it dead in the center, I'm feeling a little quirky. And if you want the feet of the birdie to touch the bottom, you can go ahead and do that. Hi, Yo-Yo Crafter. 
Lucy, I've done that so many times and I learned don't do it on tinted windows because if you press a little too hard, the design stays in the tint. You can also take a clear plastic box and you can either put your phone with the light on underneath it or one of those lights that you push down like this or anything for camping and it becomes a light box. So you put your pattern on top of the lid, you put your light inside and that works too. I did that for a while too. But I'm going to put I'm going to put mine over there a little bit. Balance it between the top and the bottom. And I think for me and my my head tells me that wherever I'm working, I want to do it in a way that I'm not going to drag my hand through the ink. So I would go, I wouldn't want to go from right to left because I'm right-handed and then my palm would be touching it. So I'm going to go top to bottom so that I can just keep going like this so that my hand doesn't have any chance of touching anything. I want to write on a piece of paper first. Make sure you're not using, I would avoid uh, like a Sharpie, even the Sharpie pens. Ow. Clear glass cutting boards work too with the phone. Yes, Any, even, even if you have one of those living room tables or dining room table that has glass on it, you can put a lamp underneath there and do that too. So anything that is going to allow you to see through it because holding, taping it to the wall is fine. It'll stay up on the window, I mean. You can tape it to the window and then you can trace and then put your arm down and relax and then trace. It gets to be a, a bit much. I really prefer to do this standing up. I like to be able to see straight down on my projects, so when I'm cutting and tracing and all that, I prefer to stand. Now, you don't want to get too close. If For me, I went ahead and folded my seams into the block just to the last two there. Maybe all of them. Did I do all of them? Yeah, all of them in there just because I didn't want to have the extra bulk. So I want to make sure that I'm not going to be stitching into the seam allowance because that's just going to be annoying. And of course, you don't have to write birdie stitches in the month and the and the lady's name or anything like that. I don't do the like this. I'm really a little scratcher like this. Yo-Yo Crafter, if you, you have to have your picture small. You can't have, if you're on the computer, you can't have the picture large. You have to have the picture down at the side and then down below where you sit, you know, if you like and subscribe, you can find the chat box, click on that and it should pop up. Are you on a computer? Because if you're on the phone, then it's down below. So I just do, what's great about the friction is if I mess up, I can go ahead and hit it with the heat. Now my top one did not print all the way. So I'm just gonna fake it because unless you're putting your block right next to mine in real life, not just on the computer, who's gonna know? I can make my rainbow more colors or less colors. If you want something different, if you don't want this to be March, you can go ahead and do something different. If you don't want birdies, you can go ahead and put a bunny down there or a dog. I've been getting just a little irritated. It's not hard to fix. It just, I'm just tired of having to fix it all the time. Mine keeps going back to, what is it, like 140 or something. I have to keep putting it back up to 720. Everyone's always like fuzzy and blurry at first. And I'm like, what? And if I don't go completely on with the friction, I can hit it with steam. Now, if you forgot to put your interfacing on, and you think, well, after I go ahead and trace it all out, I'll just go ahead and press my interfacing on then. It's no big deal. And you forgot that you're using a friction. This design isn't too bad to redraw, but if you did a really big detailed one and you forgot, you can always pop it in the freezer because it really honestly comes back when it's really cold. You know, not that I haven't done that a couple times. I'm on a Chromebook. I'm on a Chromebook too. So... 
I have temporary computer lesson. See how my picture, I don't have, if I just have it all like this, then it's too big. I have to escape and make it small. And if I close out the chat, can I close out the chat? No. Okay, down here, there would be a, a box here. If it doesn't show up on the right-hand side, right down here, you'll see chat and you can bring it up. And then you have live chat and you wanna make sure that you don't have top chat on. You wanna hit live chat so you can see everyone talking right now. That's how I do it on this. I like to, when I'm watching other lives, I watch it on my tablet. I have an Android tablet and then I chat on my phone because chatting on a tablet is not easy. If you're not going to trace this all out in one shot, you want to, or if you have problems with it moving a lot or you have children, you can go ahead and tape it down with some washi tape. That'll hold it nicely and you'll still be able to pull it off. Back when I was first doing it, we didn't have things like washi tape. We had to use scotch tape and tear our patterns and get it stuck to the fabric or try masking tape. Smorzy. See, we're talking. Smorzy wants food. Mocha's on the table. I had whiskers on the table this morning. I whispered in all the cats' ears this morning that they're getting a bath on Sunday, and now they're all sweet and lovey-dovey to me. Because they know. I had the first tablet I had. It was very difficult, and it kept making up words as we went along and it would change what I wanted to type and it just did mocha this is not food for you sweetie I just had a hard time and it would take so long and so slow and then all of a sudden like a whole sentence would pop up so it would drive me crazy okay so that's it it's all Mine's all traced out. Put utensils away. So if you do a lot of tracing for whatever reason, if you do like appliques and stuff like that, or you're getting into embroidery and stuff, a light box for a little bit of money, $20, $25, it's really worth it. It doesn't need to do anything super fancy. It just needs to do the bare minimum. They had different ones that were for like artists and for people that were doing this and that and the next thing and I'm like, no. Or where it doesn't fall. I just needed to do the basics, you know. I just needed to trace things for me. So if I'm gonna, I have little smaller hoops, and this one isn't going to do the entire thing. So I can start up at the top with my rainbow. When you're doing these plastic hoops or the wooden hoops, they have some, now when you're doing these plastic hoops, you have to really pay attention because it says this side up on it. Is this six inch, where does it say it? Maybe it doesn't say it on the small ones, but the bigger hoops, I know it says this side up. So you have to put one on top and the other one and it just sits together really nice and it has a lip that holds it in nice and tight. But you have to do that thing where you keep pulling it and everything like that. This one, I just pop it in. There really isn't anything to pull unless it's kind of in your way. I didn't think to put a link up, but I have a grime guard that can go on the round ones or on the Q-snaps. And that will, if your hands get a little bit oily or something, when you're touching the rest of your fabric, it won't get on it. It'll keep it nice and covered and nice and clean. 
I really like it nice and tight. There's some things that I do without it, but that's not going to work because I can't see all of my rainbow. I really prefer to have it in a hoop. And that's the thing. It's, it's whatever works for you. A lot of people do the, the running in and out and stuff. I'm really a one. For things like this, I can't line it up if I do it a bunch. I can't do like when you're doing hand quilting and you do a bunch at the same time. I just, it doesn't work. So I'm going to use red, orange. I'm going to do the orange first because I want to show you guys how to pull it out. Now with the red that's on the bobbin, you just, what was the name of the hoop? It's a spring hoop, a spring loaded hoop or a spring hoop. I know they have them on Amazon. Oh, now I got to take the food away so the other cat doesn't eat it. I know you eyeballing it. That's not... It's expensive food. You can't have it. It's not good for you anyways. It gives you a bellyache. No belly aches for men mocha. Huh. Hi, Carla. I love to watch embroidery videos on YouTube. I watch a variety of them, but I really like Sarah Humphrey. H-O-M-F-R-E-Y or something like that. To know what oh and she studied she has like a degree type thing she studied in the the royal with the the Queen's embroidery people and stuff like that so she has like a major degree so she teaches me all of the special little things and if you were to just take this off you would end up with a big mess if you want to leave this nice and pretty let's see if I can figure it out when you're looking there's this one little short piece that's sticking outside of the paper. You see how I have that one little short tail right there that's sticking out? And then you have this long one that comes from inside in this area here. This is the one we want to pull. And it's the neatest little trick. If you were to hold this, remember, don't touch this short little nubby one. You want this nice long one. You can pull this. And look how nice and neat it comes out. And you normally go from your fingertip to your elbow, maybe your shoulder if you're going to push it. And it's nice to have, oh, I have fancy ones. I'm going to use my fancy ones because one of you sent me these dangerous, dangerous fancy, what is it, Kai scissors? Yeah. And then you just trim it off. And then you put these away because they're very, very sharp. It's not for you. So now, if you think about it, it really, six of them is not that big. Mine were, must have been, I don't know what I did. They looked awfully loosey-goosey and I got fuzzies, thank you. I just want to use three. So what I can do, I wonder if the 25 is thinner embroidery floss than the other. What is this, 25, 25? This is regular. Mocha, that is not for you. Don't you psh me. No, it's about the same. Bless you. When I have extra pieces, I just wind it on the bobbin. But I'll show you what we're going to do on this one. So now, you can just, as I said, you can go ahead and just stitch. You watch her all the time. I love her. Yes, Sarah Humphrey. I, I love her. She, excuse me. Excuse me. This is mine. Not yours. No. I'm not. Ar I am arguing with you. Oops, sorry. Go over here. Go over there and lay down. You can just take three and three and split it in half. But the official nice and neat way to keep it from getting all tangled is you pull out one. Ha, ha, ha. 
pull out two. Now, if you're using all six, you don't have to do this. It keeps it nice and neat when you're doing all six. And this really, it seems crazy, but if you do this and you pull all three out that way and then line them up, it really keeps them from getting all tangled. And I find that I don't really even need to wax it or anything like that. Yeah, that's what we just did, Sandra. We just pulled, that's why I said we were talking about her because she taught me how to do that. And then she says, I can just take this leftover piece, fold it over, and just go like that, and then put it back into my container. And it's all nice and neat, and life goes on. Now the controversy that it's what you, it's one of those things is what you do in the privacy of your own home can be a little bit different than what you do out online and stuff. Some people like to lick the floss and some people don't. It does, Gwenny, but also I watched, I watched Sarah, Sarah Humphrey, and I watched another one on PBS, and she said that a lot of times if you're doing like a lot of French knots and stuff like that, that you can go ahead and leave all six together. They will lay nicely. If you separate them all, I think that's what I did on the original ones, I separated them all, and that's why they got all loosey-goosey. So if you leave them together, it'll stay nice and tight, and you won't have that look. Now, I sometimes can just squeeze the three together and put my needle right on top. And I get lucky and I get two out of three that time and other times I fold it over my needle squeeze it before between my fingers and then put it through and then that way I got all three you can you can Gwenny but it all depends on what look you're going for if you're gonna do all six together you can leave them that way, especially it's different too in older books and new ones. Like the DMC, we didn't talk about it, but the older floss can sometimes bleed. If you're going to have a really special project, you can cut a piece off, get it wet, maybe get a piece of white fabric wet, lay it down on top of each other, squish it between it and a sandwich and let it sit there till it dries, and you'll be able to see if it's going to bleed or not, just like you would with fabric. Now the next big controversy is whether or not you put a knot on the end. You can do an away knot, and that just means you're going to put a knot ahead of where you're going. I learned that one from the PBS lady. You can do a quilter's knot if you want. I just do the one where you put it around your finger and you roll it off. Now, since I'm going to be going from here all the way over to there doing the back stitch, I can put my knot somewhere up here. And then when I put my knot, I put it on the top. Some people will put it right where they're going and other people like to put it in an empty space, but I don't want that extra hole. And when I bring my thread back to start, my thread's going to be here. And as you see my buddy, no, needles and thread are back. Don't make me shut the door on you. Go, go. Worse than a two year old. I'm going to be working my back thread, I'll be crossing over it, and that's going to lock it into place. Get in the window. Get in the window. Get in there. Brat. England has that school that, that they, a lot of people say they go to and it's like their dream. You can go for just a couple weeks or one week on vacation and take a class or you can get a total immersified degree and all that. It's really kind of cool. You need to learn so much. Thank you. She's my sweetheart. Apparently, now that it's just me in the house, she's much braver. I have a thimble. I keep that in the same spot at all times so I remember where it is. I like a leather thimble. I put the metal thing on the back because it's always in my way. And I put the there. And for the running stitch now, I'm 
everybody out of the way. Your length of your stitch is going to be up to you. I like teeny tiny stitches. I don't want them like itty bitty, but I would want them smaller than the ones I was doing before. So I do the poke and stab and jab. You can, you know, gather stitches like when you do when you're quilting and stuff, but do like a, a running type stitch. But I want to have full coverage, so I'm going to do the back stitch. So I'm going to go down and make my first little stitch, and that's going to determine the size of all of... Yeah, I have beeswax. It depends. Sometimes I need it and sometimes I don't. A lot of times when I pull my floss apart, I don't need to have the beeswax. Again, I got a nice chunk on Amazon, and it lasts quite a long time. I just keep it in a sealed container. I have another one that I'm actually working from. I just don't know where it is. If I start to find that my thread is tangling a lot, then I'll go ahead and treat it with the beeswax. This isn't going to be an heirloom piece. Now my first stitch to determine the length that I'm going to do. Okay, can you see my first stitch? Now I'm going to go forward the same amount. I don't want to be yelling in your ear. I feel like I yell a lot. I'm going to go forward the same distance my floss up and then I'm going to go backwards and go down the same hole that the original one came out and that's going to give me a solid line see that and now my goal is to have my stitches even if you're close it's like hand quilting as you get going you're going to get better you if you do all 12 blocks your 12th block is going to look nicer than your first block and here is my thread right here so my next one I'm gonna make sure that when I go forward until I get it hooked a couple times I just kind of check to make sure that my floss is coming up on one side and my needles going down on the other and that's going to cover that just like if you want to you can just have a long tail and you can weave it in afterwards or just run over hold it with your thumb and you can cover over it but if I just did that away knot it makes it so I don't have to really think about it. I don't believe it tells you the colors. You could choose whatever color you want. I went up to Michael's and I saw, oh, pretty colors. So anything you want, if you, because your birdie, when you get to like the birdie, your birdie can be any color. The rainbow is a rainbow as we all know it. The shade of the rainbow is going to be different. So some people like to come up and then when they go down this way, they go down that same spot and they'll come forward past where you come up the right amount of distance and bring it up. If you don't have it in a hoop, it works out much better that way. It's a little harder with the hoop because it's tight, but you can loosen it. I just can't stay on the line. I can't get a straight line by doing it that way. You're close. The last A in embroidery is an E, but other than that, I mean, we knew what you were talking about, so I, I no worries about it. I know I my native language is English, and I can smell spell. I can smell. I can spell pretty well. I really can smell real well, also. But what comes out of my mouth and what I type is just never quite right. So as I'm going, I can already see, you know, do I like how thin that is? Is that going to make me happy? Am I going to be able to see that in real life from a distance? Now, looking at it face to face, I think it's pretty good. I might want to go to four threads or something maybe on my next one. That's why I wanted to do the practice one before I, I ran out of time. So I'll probably do this one with the three and I'll do this one with four and see which one I like. And then I'll just continue on. The, the link is in the description of this video and this morning's video and it'll take you to the page. And what you need to do is when you get to the page, oops, I need to see if you can see before I leave. All right, you're probably not going to be able to see very well, but here's the birdie stitches. 
And up here at the top of the blog, it says Birdie Stitches, and there's a little arrow next to it. And if you click on that or hover over that, it has all the different blocks, tells you how to, you know, Oh, Robin, you did something wrong. Anyway, it gives you all the links to the blocks each month because we did it as a mystery of all. We, I mean, we knew it was like birdie stitches, and once you saw the first block, you kind of knew what everybody else's was going to be. But we had to wait to the first of the month all the time, which is really kind of nice. It was really exciting. We... Most of us got it done, and on there also, when you're looking, it'll give a link to the Flickr group that she had, because Flickr was Instagram way back when, because there was, you know, there was no Instagram. We all hung out on Flickr, and they were in groups and stuff like that. I don't think they had Facebook groups in the beginning much either. I am... I love to try new projects and new hobbies, but I have to be really careful, so I make sure that... I just do the ones that I really enjoy the most and I love embroidery and look embroidering and quilting it's two hobbies but I can put them together and it becomes one I can mix these easily it's great for darning clothes and like sat some people say sashiko some people say sashiko I heard sashiko that's what I kind of stick with you can do that it's a form of embroidery but you can do it to mend your clothes and mend I don't even mend your sheets and your socks and just decorate your jeans. So while it's a new hobby, it's still kind of the same supplies pretty much. You don't have to use exactly what people say. If you have gorgeous hand dyed yarn, sock yarn you can probably get away with on this. And if you have something thicker, you can always separate the strands on the yarn and just go down to one that's not too thick and use that. Did we get all the questions? Are we, are we out? Everyone's on the right page now. We all know what we're doing. Now, of course, you don't have to join in. And if you want to hang out on the random live streams, when I come in and pop in and embroider with you guys, you can hang out without doing this blog, this project. I put the hashtag down below, our Asylum Crafts Birdie, I believe it is. So if you want to show off on Instagram, And you're going to see all 12 months, so you can pick and choose. If you only want something for Christmas, you can do that one. If you can scale it on your printer and make it larger, if you want to put it in something bigger, or you want to do it like on a table runner, you can make it the center of a quilt. And when I get to my knot, I just need to be really careful. I'll put my needle all the way to the back. I have the extra thread so I can just pull my knot up nice and tight and go between the knot and the fabric and snip it off. Throw it away where the cats can't get it. Robin knit socks. I, I, I mean, I'm starting, I have super secret projects going on. I shouldn't say that, but yeah, I'm knitting socks. I haven't started Robbie's Christmas socks yet. I have two other projects that I'm working on, and I have, a, I, I still, I bought the needles, oh, Robin, your mouth today, I bought the needles for the cable hat, I actually got the last three pairs of needles at Michael's, I put them somewhere safekeeping, yes, for Robbie, <laughs> I never knit socks for myself, but Robbie wants thicker socks, so hopefully, good memory, hopefully if I knit the thicker socks, they'll go quicker, obviously. They won't be the tiny needles with the tiny yarn. So if they knit up quicker, I can knit him two or three pairs and knit some for myself. Because neither one of us wear them in our shoes. We both just wear them around the house. So we don't have to have sock yarn. Knit them quicker. If you have one of those stands, you can, I have a stand, I just didn't bring it down. You can hook your hoop into the stand and that way you can it reminds me of milk and the cow where you can use one hand at the top and one at the bottom and you can go really quick do this if you're not using like 
black fabric or something or black thread you can still see in a light background you can do this while you're sitting in the living room watching movies with the kids and sports with hubby or whatever you don't mind the secret being leaked Gwenny? if I could find more time I would go ahead and knit for people I almost have it to where I don't fall asleep until a little bit later at night now, so that's kind of nice. I sound like a broken record and I feel like one, but it, it's tax season, so it's so my first year I'm doing all my inventory. Just picture this in your head. If you own a business and that business deals with fabric, Gwenny, you're going to have heart failure if you would have to do this. You have to pull out all of your fabric, measure it, and find out the square inches of every piece of fabric you own, write it down and then input it into a spreadsheet. Not just that I have a bunch of blue fabric, but you have to say I've got Tula Pink, this fabric or that fabric so that you know which one it is, how much you paid for it, what year you bought it in, and measure it by square inches. That's scary. I just take a guess. Gwen said, I'm not running a business. I don't have to. Well, you guys got different rules anyways, because you're up in Canada, right? So your rules are different. Your your some of your things are a little bit more relaxed than they are here. Forget inventory. I don't care, it doesn't matter. I know. I mean, you know kind of what you have for fabric. But because now I have to know how much of that fabric I put into a tote bag and then subtract that out of the inventory because that's the only way you're going to know if your business made a profit or a loss by how much finished project products you have left and how much inventory you have left and then all the dollar amounts associated. I have to count all my tassels and all my charms and all the little cue snaps each individual. <laughs> I mean nobody's going to come by and say ooh Robin you have 112 you know of the cam snaps and you only wrote 98 I can totally guess true you do have a lot but I, I imagine you have a kind of an idea in your head is is I'm gonna do a project and I need red fabric you kind of know if you have red fabric you might not know if you have a specific one I was looking for taco fabric I really thought I had taco fabric. I don't have taco fabric. I have hot pepper fabric. I have green bell pepper fabric. I've got pizza, popcorn, chocolate, no taco. That's smart, Jackie. Now, most of it I'm okay because a lot of it's donated, so there's no, there's no value at the beginning. There's no, when did I buy this? Do I have a receipt? Did I buy it at, you know, what store did I buy it at? Let me remember. You know, if, if you're a bad bookkeeper and you're trying to play catch up or something, then you have to think about all of that. But I don't know. I'm thinking I don't use all of my fabric all year long anyway. And a lot of it is just for leftovers. A lot of it is just for personal use. So someone told me I had to do all of my scraps and figure them out by square inch. And I said, you are crazy. That's not happening. And I was glad because the thing, the spreadsheets I purchased from an accountant from Paper and Spark, she had the how-to videos that go with it. And she said, as long as the line all the way across is the same, it doesn't matter if you count this fabric by yardage and you count that fabric by square inches as long as you only do that one thing all the time. So I think I can do my scraps by grams. That's what I thought, Jackie. I asked in the in the Facebook group and she's like, no, nope, no. Nope. And some people said if you have scraps, just throw it away because it's not worth trying to count it. And I'm like, people, my entire business is all about scraps. I can't just throw it away. 
I'm going to weigh my scraps and say if I have 100 grams of red scraps at the beginning of the year and 25 grams came in throughout the year and this is how much I have left at the end, I, I think that should work. Okay, French nuts. I did those in a video. I'm a double wrapper for my French knots. Sometimes I do the colonial knots, but I've come back to doing French knots. Oh, I just a little bit more floss though. Colonial knots are a little bit easier for some people to do, and it makes a bigger knot. French knots is when you really want to have like a stand with two hands. So let's talk the Bakes downloaded all patterns. Oh, you're welcome, Sylvia. Hey, and she, I asked the, the designer and she gave us permission. You know what I thought is the greatest thing and I thanked her for not, I think, I hope I thanked her that I thanked her for letting us do it, of course, but that the, her patterns are still free. Seven years later, a lot of times I'm in this one group. Now, these people make money off of their designs in the group I'm in in Facebook, and I totally understand. So you have, like, the month of March. If you download the pattern in March, it's free. April 1st, it goes into the Etsy shop, and you have to pay for it. And I totally get that. Excuse me. So it's really nice that as I said, seven years later, these were free then, and they're still free now. And she has some great designs, uh, quilt patterns and stuff in her Etsy shop. When you go to her blog, her blog is still active, unlike, you know, mine. She's still active in the blog, and she's active on Instagram. Check out her Etsy shop. You know, give her at least some views, if not some business. She has some little patterns, and then she has some big quilts. She just has some really gorgeous things. Even if you just go to Instagram and thank her for having such a wonderful design, if you guys are stitching along with me. We'll have to talk about, too, um, how to press a block afterwards. We can go over it real quick now. But when you make an embroidery, if you put your iron right on it, you're going to flatten out all the stitches. What you do is you take a nice clean white towel, one that you hope is not going to transfer anything. You put the fluffy towel down. You take your block and you put it upside down. The fluffy towel is going to cradle those stitches so that you don't flatten them out. And then you can go ahead and give it a little bit of pressing from the back. So that way you're not going to squish all your embroidery down. Bye, Rose. Single bed railroad, single bed railroad top. I like those quilts. Download patterns. They are linked down below in the description box. There's 12 of them, so there's 12 months. The patterns for the embroidery. All the blocks, if you make them this way, in the quilt, they're all made identical to this with two, a 20, two and a half inch squares all the way around. You can use the same ones for every month or you can do like I am and I'm going to change my border fabrics based on whatever I'm putting into this. I tried QuickBooks and, and it just didn't seem to do what I needed it to do. I, I actually purchased this. It's $129, which I thought was a pretty good deal because it's a one-time deal. Now for the lifetime, she will give me updates on it. If she changes anything around in the spreadsheets, I have access. I'll save this year's and then I can just upload a new one from the one I've already downloaded for next year and everything's all there and then she gives you help and every month she has like this coffee chat thing and she encourages you and she talks to you about what you're doing and she gives you a checklist she's like she wants to help she's an accountant s'moresy's found my papers in the closet she's tearing them apart she wants to help you so she gives you a checklist okay so first of the month 
you now need to, it's March 1st, you need to do your February bookkeeping stuff. So here's your checklist of what you need to do. Go ahead and go down through it and get it all done. And it, it works out really good. So I'm figuring that once I get everything entered, after that it's going to be easy. They have different printables. I have things like when I when I'm working on a project, there's a checklist. So if I use if I use a zipper, I can just write down one 12 inch zipper. If I use two charm packs, I can write down charm packs. So that it's just sitting there when the project is done, I'll have all that information and I won't have to go, what did I do with it? And, or to really try to figure things out and enter it in the computer as I'm going. Paper and Spark, yes. That's, I, Jackie, I mentioned her. You must have snuck out on us again. I love her. She explained things. Now, it's different for everybody. That's why I QuickBooks just didn't make sense to me. But I've been going through, I probably shouldn't be doing it at night at the end of the day when I'm tired. So I've had to watch the videos a couple times and I just do the step, rewind the video, make sure I did it right. Okay, we'll go to the next step. I've never done spreadsheets before, so now I'm renaming columns and, and she's teaching us how to do the math to get page two to add up and page three and all that. So she holds your hand and it's really good. Ah, I thought so, because normally I can't remember if I say anything, but I knew I said that one. Nothing against you, Jackie. I'm just like, I knew I said it. Yeah, I love it. It's been really good. So hopefully everything will work out well in the end but I just QuickBooks wasn't for me I tried it a couple times because Etsy has QuickBooks that you can connect to and everything just goes automatically and all that but just wasn't enough you guys know if you've been here for a while that I don't all right this isn't gonna work it's too short I we all do things differently we all see things differently and we need to learn things differently Yes, Paper and Spark. I think her name's Janet. I'm terrible with names. But everyone says it enough, so that, that helped me remember. I put her up on my TV so she's nice and big, and then I sit next to her at the desk, and just we do, we do our homework together. I spent all of yesterday I, I know I did over 40 pieces of fabric. I just have to enter in the computer. You know, it's just like any other job. You're busy at work all day, so you have to do the other time, other stuff at night. And really, I'm living alone, so who's going to complain? Yeah, exactly. Even with, with quilting and stuff like that, if, if it doesn't work for you, you're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to do it. It's, it's not going to, it's going to become a chore and it's not going to, it just doesn't work for you. But I think we are done for today. I still have a little bit more orange to do. I just need to pull out a new thread. My back and my arms are a little sore. Twelve months, twelve my months. Yeah, when we do this, you guys can do like I said you can do just one month or do a bunch I'm gonna work on marches and if if March hello don't if March isn't over yet April's not here yet I'm gonna go ahead and work on January January's and then when April comes I'll work on April's and then if there's time left and I didn't finish January's I'll do that or you can start in January and just keep going since we don't have to wait each month for the new pattern to come out then we can go ahead and work at our own pace pick and choose if you only want to do the ones for your family's birthdays if you only want to do the holidays you can go ahead and do those If I can get my act in together, next Friday's tutorial, I will make a bag to hold this project in. When you're done, it's best to remove your hoop so that you don't get hoop marks, especially when you have interfacing in there. Come on. There we go. Because
because you can get these hoop marks that end up getting stuck in there. So I'm hoping to make a bag on next Friday's tutorial, and if not, sometime in the near future. So it's like one of those cross stitch bags that we can store all of this in. I think I want to do the one without the clear window, but we're going to do a lace zipper. Because someone was very sweet and sent me some nice long lace zippers so we can learn how to do the pouch so that we can just slide everything in with the lace zipper. So does anyone have any questions? Has my moderators figured out who they're going to give fabric postcards to this week? I'll pick another person from the replay also so that my replay watchers, you guys can still leave a comment down below and I'll choose one in a few days from the replay people. So if nobody has any questions, I think we're going to go ahead and just leave it like this. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and a nice weekend. I am, where is my stuff? I usually show you guys what I'm working on. Let me see, before we go, hello, where did I hide you? Here it is. So I may not use the quilt boards for quilt blocks, but I've been using them just like I want Sandra and I are what? Okay. I don't know what 12 my months is. You'll get what eventually, Gwenny, the embroidery? I use these to hold my current projects. I have, I'm working on this scrappy, this, this really cute, pouch and then I use because I did the Elvis so I thought well I'll just go ahead and use some scraps up and then what was left was this fun thing and this guy was just a weird shape cut out just sitting on his own so I went ahead and applicate him in there that's a fabric postcard and then I have another set of music ones and coffee beans Robin Lynn Moon Mm -hmm. Hold on, scrolling, scrolling. Go really far? Did I miss it? Oh, Lynn Moon, is that who you're choosing, Jackie? I'm looking this check for. I'm looking to check for questions. Lynn Moon, if you're still here, can you please email me your mailing address so I can send you out a fabric postcard? I've decided that I'm going to make a, a spreadsheet because I keep telling people, okay, thanks Jackie, I appreciate it. I keep telling people, okay, you want a fabric postcard, and then I don't remember which videos I planned on choosing them from. So this way, each month I can choose at least one or two videos, and then I can put the person's name so that if for some reason the random generator or the random Robin keeps picking the same person, I can make sure, you know, that I'm spreading it out and not doing it to everyone. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I will see you guys. You don't have any bonus videos coming up right now. Maybe I'll see you on Whip It Wednesday. Maybe you'll see me before. Sandra, Sandra Meyer, can you send me your mailing address, please? Sandra, I think she's a little bit behind in the chat. Yes, please, thumbs up, everyone. Thank you so much. Robin, look at my message. Oh, okay. I can't right now because I'm using my phone. Well, I guess I could. I have a computer, but I'm using my phone. Are we good now, everyone? All right, guys, I will see you on Wednesday. If not, okay, let's see, we're March. You never know, I might do another live stream where we're just going to sit and chat and I'll work on my embroidery. You guys can work on whatever you want. Anytime we do these random live streams, please feel free to ask any questions you have. 
If you have questions outside of what we're working on, if you're like, Robin, I want to know more about a zipper or a snap or something, like we did the last time with Fabric Postcards, please don't feel bad. You can derail us. I'll let you know. Hold on, guys. Remember the question. We need to finish this thought first because my brain is Swiss cheese and I'll forget it. So if you ever have any questions, you can go ahead, ask them at any time. But when we just sit around and chat and I'm going to do a little embroidery and you guys are doing your stitching, you can ask questions. People in the chat might know the answer. I might know the answer. We can try looking it up. Maybe we're smart enough to figure it out on our own. You'll find me. My email is rsislandcrafts at gmail.com. It's down below in the description box. I will see you guys eventually at the latest on Whip It Wednesday.